A very good morning. My name is Isaiah Philip Sekitola. You're welcome to another session of our live broadcast. This is the Porter's Gate live radio broadcast. You're welcome this morning. We're going to continue on our uh, teaching that we've been looking at for a while now on the concept of God's judgment. We've been dealing with tracking the mind of God. And we're going to be, we're going to be looking into the concept of uh, um, God's judgment again. In fact, we're going to be doing the part six this morning. Therefore, uh, I hope that you will be you're ready. You're prepared yourself. All right, and uh, we're just going to get into the word and allow the Spirit of God to give us, you know, direction into that which you know the Father has ordained for us for today. All right, a couple of things we are going to be uh, looking into this morning that I believe will further shape you know the 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 concept and um, the, the the desires of god for you know the days that we live in there's so many things that are, are happening right now like you know we've highlighted before i'm just trying to post uh, um the link on facebook so that people can know that we are live streaming okay yeah we're live streaming so they can join us if they want to we're done with that okay yes all right so if you are listening or you want to connect with us from Facebook, uh, please, you can do that. We are live streaming now. All right. We, we can do that. Okay. So uh, I was just about saying that right, there, there are several things that, you know, we, we try to bring out the last time that I was on air in, in, in the idea of how to understand all right, the present day, the present season in con in connecting to you know the concept of you know judgment if if you look at what is happening generally right now in the body of Christ there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of you know misunderstanding there's a lot of you know uh if you will disappointment many people really do not understand what is taking place all right some are like some of the things that we are seeing should not be happening but <laughs> they are actually happening and they, they will continue to happen, in fact, on a very large scale. But it's for us to, you know, go back into the word of God and find divine pattern and find directions, all right, that has been given to us so that we can, you know, track the mind of God, track his will, track his counsel and track his desire for this day. Like I said, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in you know, in uh, some of our past, you know, our sessions that we, we are in a time when a day where, the, the 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 principles of 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 God's of God's counsel in terms of the closure of the purposes of God are coming to an end. Okay, we're in a day where God's counsel, God's purpose, God's desire for our for our season, all right, is coming to that point of closure, and therefore we're going to be seeing a lot of things happen. Okay, in in the sense of judgment uh, uh, and uh, you know and directions and so many things are going to be highlighted thank you my sister for joining this morning really appreciate it thank you man of god for joining a lot of things are going to be happening all right in 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 various platforms that would demand that all right we develop spiritual wisdom knowledge and and understanding in terms of tracking the mind of god knowing what the father is doing finding the voice of god within all right you know what is going on what is happening okay so because if we don't know what is happening then we are not better you know than you know those two guys walking on the road to Emmaus where you know Christ was in fact in their midst but they could not track Christ they couldn't find all right the the, the, the prophetic you know counsel of God within all that has been happening in Jerusalem they said they said to this stranger that they were with they said are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has been happening in Jerusalem in the past three days? All right. So so we can be in, 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 in the midst of activity that is very prophetic and still miss all right, the, the speakings of God and still miss what God is saying and still miss out from that which the spirit of God is emphasizing. So, you know, one of my calling, one of my, you know, uh, um, assignment and ministry is to be able to point the church to all right to what is going on so that at least we can have a sense of direction we can know what the spirit of the lord is doing and saying to us within every uh, 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 context of event that is shaping that is you know uh, 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 you know 
developing and, uh, and and metamorphosing within the concept of this day that we call you know the last day of course we're in the last day and therefore in that in that in that context there are things that will be happening all right that will be projecting and will be highlighting god's prophetic counsel in other words the events that are happening in our day are not just mere events Okay, what is happening to the church? What is happening within uh, nations, within the context of, you know, leadership, the economy, all that are part of, you know, uh, God speaking to us. And we will be hearing God's voice on a various frequency on a different levels. But it is my it is my desire that as a church that we all come to that point where we can at least have insight into the mind of God and, 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 and be able to see. All right, what the Spirit of God is doing so that we are better prepared. We are better prepared and better positioned. All right, so, so that the Bible says the day of the Lord will not catch on us as a thief in the night. We don't want to be caught on unprepared. We don't want to be caught on our ways. We want to be ready. We want our household, our family. We want our ministry. We want, all right, uh, 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 you know, what we stand for, okay, to be in alignment with, with what God is saying. So uh, this is one of the reasons, of course, why I'm doing this teaching. And it's important that we understand when we say God's judgment, what is God doing? What 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 is this judgment all about? Okay, like I've, I've explained in some of the uh, uh, se- sessions that we did, that the concept of judgment obviously is different from that of condemnation all right condemnation is when we have been warned several times we've been we've been you know uh, uh spoken to messages you know god said i send prophets to them when you when you keep hearing god's prophetic voice god's prophetic word and you keep hardening your heart you refuse to listen you refuse to obey then basically you're preparing yourself to go into what into exile into into captivity and and a lot of things can happen all right in in that state of cap- captivity so so we've got to understand that when god begin to speak to us or begin to highlight certain things in our life in our ministry in our home in our family within our finance okay in our relationship all that is to help us to come to the point of repentance. Remember uh, a few months back in fact last year i did a series of teaching you know that that you know that dealt with okay the, the the nearness of the kingdom and 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 one of the things we were looking at back then is that the more the kingdom of god comes near to us all right obviously the coming of the kingdom highlights certain certain areas of our life okay that we might not even know that are there so the more you get closer you the more you move nearer to to you know to the reality of what the bible terms the kingdom of god the more the light of god okay the more god let me let me let me give you this example let me show you this the more god turns his light on you all right the more god turns his light on you and and the more you know god's light illuminates every aspect of our life the more we are able to to discern and see areas that we need to correct areas we need to adjust areas we need to maybe even discard relationship we might need to give up because the nearness of the kingdom of god can 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 do two things in our life can bring us to a place where we are able to enter the next reality of God's plan for our life or in fact be led into captivity judgment and that's what we see with the ministry of John the Baptist I'm going to be highlighting some things that I've said before but this morning I really want us to go further in some of the things that the spirit of the Lord you know has revealed to me and uh, we're going to be looking into some scripture so the nearness of the kingdom of God or uh, redefine our value system the closer the, the closer the, the, the kingdom of God, all right, the, the, the closer the, the government of God, amen, in our life, and the and, and the closer the visibility of his values ought to be ought to be ought to be made manifest in our life. In other words, the more the, the, the more the kingdom of God comes close to you, John says rip for the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm going to read that scripture. In fact, maybe I should start with that scripture in John chapter, uh, uh, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 3. Here, here, is, here is the declaration of John. Remember that John was a forerunner. And I'm going to say a little bit about, about that this morning. I'm going to share a little bit about John being the forerunner. Okay. When God wants to 
initiate okay a, 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 a new season when God wants to bring us into a new season the first thing he does is that he releases okay that ministry if you will of a foreigner that prepares the path and one of the things that a foreigner does is that okay he, he strengthens every crooked path okay he, he makes sure that that which is defined as mountains all right become plain and the valleys are filled these are all dimensions of human life values and 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 and, and systems of, of of living that affects the economy that affects politics that affects leadership that affects structures family homes you know every aspect of of, of life okay are captured within that which john was sent to you know to to speak with to deal with in terms of the valleys you know the mountains the crooked paths he said the crooked path shall be strengthened the, the mountains shall be made plain all right the valleys okay will be filled so so all that is to prepare the path all right for the entrance for the coming of christ when Christ is about to come into our life, into our home, and this we're not just talking about salvation here, because the concept of salvation is far broader than just we standing in, in front of a man of God and say, Jesus, come into my life. That is an entire, you know, you know, spiritual, you know, uh, principles and philosophy that when Christ comes into your life and takes resident over your life, over your home, over your family, over your business, all right, that you no longer have control, you no longer have a say, okay, that everything that deals with your life now becomes, amen, regulated from the kingdom of God, from, from you know, from the headquarter, amen, from, from heaven, that is no longer about you, amen, that you step aside and allow amen christ to become the one that defines your values that governs your life or rather shapes your 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 initiatives and everything about your life so salvations and repentance amen is beyond just a a confession jesus said these people you know they draw near to me with their mouth but their heart is far from me The, the, the 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 values of their life amen is complete completely aberrant to my will and purpose all right that's not repentance obviously that's not salvation so so we're looking at a day where heaven is ushering in a different uh, 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 if you will or a better understanding of what salvation and redemption means in order to prepare us amen for the day of the lord for the day of his coming the day of his coming amen the bible says it's going to be a day of gloom amen and gnashing of teeth for those who are not ready who are not prepared but it's going to be a day of joy and gladness for those who are ready who have prepared themselves who have made themselves ready so we're going to be seeing two orders of things happening in the days of the nearness of the kingdom. In the days of the judgment of the kingdom, it's going to be that some group, amen, are going to be, you know, regretting why they did not change, what did not, why they did not give into the divine order and the divine pattern of God. All right, why we're going to be seeing some people, amen, rejoice and 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 celebrate because, amen, they have really surrendered their life, their 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 values, all right, to you know, to the principles of God. And to me, this is very very vital and important. While things may look as if well. Everything is just the same. They says they said since the day the fathers fell asleep, things have been the same. Apparently, things things are not the same because heaven is walking on the ground. Okay, heaven is walking on the ground. There are things happening. There are there are works that are coming. God is speaking through His prophets. God is sending men. God is sending or right, His servants. Okay, His His vessels, women to speak, to bring clarity, to bring direction, to bring us to order, to bring us alignment, to bring excuse me, to bring us into alignment. Because the Bible says the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. The fact is. The fact is the day of the Lord should not come as a thief in the night for those who are ready, who have been preparing themselves, who have their lambs, amen, you know, prepare and their weak trim. The day of the Lord should not meet us unprepared. And mind you, when I talk about the day of the Lord, I'm not just talking about, amen, rapture here. Beyond rapture, I'm talking about a day and a time where, all right, you, you, you are being called to move into the next emphasis, into the next seasons of God, into the next counsel of God. God into the next prophetic, you know, uh, 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 mandate of God for the earth. Because I tell you, God deals with us in seasons, and every season, all right, leads to a greater manifestation or proximity of the nearness of God. Okay, a season 
you know, uh, gets to be birthed and gets to be wrapped up, okay? They open a new order of God. I believe there are seven seasons, all right, for every man's life. That's just something that I personally believe. There are seven seasons in our life, just like there are seven seasons in, 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 in how God deals with us, all right? There are seven, you know, spirits of God. There are, you know, seven dimensions of God. So all these concepts are things that we've got to know, we've got to understand. So that when, like, I believe if you're a minister, okay, there are seven seasons to your ministry all right each season opens a new chapter of divine divine dealings divine emphasis okay there are seasons where god god begins to emphasize and deal with certain things god highlights those that are not supposed to be with you and then they leave the ministry and you wonder oh maybe i'm failing no you're not failing you're only going through a season all right that will usher in a new order of people that are committed that are faithful that are you know, that are ready to journey with you all right so we've got to understand this 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 concept these are all important you know principles that we've got to understand when we talk about you know the days of god the judgment of god the judgment of god are not just something that happens they don't just happen you don't just get judged no you you go through a period there is a season that is a that is a that is a process there is a system in place all right there ought to prepare you okay before something ever happens you know we always say this in the spirit that there are no coincidence things don't just happen because oh wow i was there and it happened there are no coincidence there are no accidents in the things of the spirit everything of the spirit <clears throat> excuse me are strategically processed and programmed all right nothing just happened Nothing happened. In fact, nothing happened in life by chance. Everything has a divine order, a divine program, a divine process. All right. And if we understand how God speaks to us and deals with us and how he wants us to relate with him and relate in relationship with one another, we will, we will, we will, we will, we will actually save ourselves right, from a lot of, you know, disappointments and heartaches and all these things that people are facing today. Like you asked me, People who are who find themselves in all these ungodly churches among these funny, you know, men who call themselves prophets and God knows what, uh, you know, if those people are really been following and and are really really hungry for God, they won't find themselves in those in those houses because the spirit of the Lord would have been warning them. You know, God would, must have sent people to them and say, you know, don't go there. Uh, you know, everything may looks green, everything may looks wonderful, but but somebody is seeing what you're not seeing and you've been warned. That's the reason why God gave us prophets. One of the reasons, in fact, one of the cardinal purpose of a prophet is to warn us ahead of time. Is to warn us, is to warn us, is to prepare us. All right. God says, I'm going to judge Nineveh. Now I want you, all right, uh, you know, Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn the people. God kept sending prophets. God kept sending, you see, but in a day where we don't even know, we don't know the real from, you know, from the fake. And the reason we don't know is because we are not studying the word to give us an accurate understanding of who a true prophet is is okay we should be able to identify a true prophet from a fake one from you know from just a charlatan we should be able to identify that that's a man of god that's not a man of god that's a woman of god no that one mm -mm, she's a charlatan now that one no she's, she's she's from a different order we should be able to understand so i'm saying this to you know to buttress this concept that the days that we're living in that we're living in right now if you look at things that are happening on a general platform they are pointing us to something and that is that God's judgment is nearby. And like I said, the judgment of God does not necessarily mean that all right, Christ is coming or is the end of the world. No, it may be the end of an age. Remember that the world that we live in all right, are, 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 are revealed to us in seasons, in generations. Every generation carries a divine order, a divine agenda, a divine assignment in God's prophetic calendar. All right? You know, Everything that God began to do from the days of, you know, the first man, all right, in the garden till this very day has been progressively moving towards the advancement of the unveiling of Christ. Okay. We saw Christ came the first, you know, the, you know, the first day. All right. Now we're seeing him coming to us in the second day. By the time it comes to us in the third day, hallelujah, we will be like him. We will see him. Amen. We will, we will, our life will become one with him. In other words, every dimensions of, of our spirituality that has been divided in terms of not understanding who we are and who he is. Amen. Bible says when we sin, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. 
All right, it, it, it will no longer be something somebody is trying to describe to us. No, we will see him. But for now, he's coming to us. And in, in this coming, we've got to be able, the Bible says this coming is the coming of the latter. All right, we've got to be able to identify. We've got to be able to see him. He's coming, he's coming to us in, in, a, in a prophetic way, meaning that we may not be able to touch and see and feel him. But he's coming to us because God is a spirit. Uh, but his word, amen, reveals to us the very nature and the very character the very identity of his spirituality in other words when you have the word of god you know the word of god you should be able to identify in fact you should be able to see and touch and taste the things of god the bible says taste and see and know that god is good you can taste god because his word earlier uh, the, the manner of his word amen brings you to the point where you begin to have you know uh, uh, that sense of 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 his goodness taste and see and know that god is good let me go back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 3. I was actually reading Matthew chapter 3. It says, in that day, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I said to you earlier that the nearness of the kingdom of God, the closer the kingdom of God comes to us, the more we begin to understand things the way God designed them, the way God ordained them. In other words, the coming, the close up, the nearness of the kingdom of God brings into visibility, brings into reality the divine order of God, the divine standard of God. But you also know that amen, the nearness of the kingdom also highlights that which amen, is not in alignment, that which is aberrant to the standard, to the values of God. So two things happen in, in, in the coming, in the nearness of the kingdom. We see, amen, the, 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 the highlighting of the standard of God, of the values of God. The Bible says, you who are righteous, continue to be righteous. It says, you that are wicked, continue your wickedness. The Bible says, darkness will increase in the last day. Amen. The Bible says, the heart of men will continue to, you know, to get, you know, more wicked and, and, and you know, and hardened to the standard of God. But you that you, you are searching, you are seeking, you are longing, you are, you are, passionately desiring amen the appearance of christ in, in, in that seasons of his coming earlier something about your heart will continue to you know to long for the truth will continue to long for god but mind you amen the, the the passion of you of your hunger and searching for the nearness of god and of his kingdom all right you know is within the context of the evil of the wickedness that is taking place on earth in other words the more darkness covers the earth the more you know wickedness becomes you know you know uh, manifest in the earth the more you're going to see amen those who are longing who are passionate who are seeking who are pursuing the things of god the more they will begin to emerge and and and, and take their place so so darkness does not really stop all right, the manifestation of, of God's counsel. In fact, it enhances it. All right, it enhances it. So we, we've got to understand that when John was saying repent, remember that John was living in a day, in a system. He was living in a time that was governed by the Roman Empire. John, this message came in a time where there was a system. There was an economic system. There was a political system. There was a religious system in place. It was within the context of those three others, a religious system, a political system, an economic system system that John the Baptist who was the way maker came and began to declare repent in other words he, he, he brought the entire order of of the political the economic and the religious system to judgment he says you guys you guys need to come to a position of repentance why because the kingdom of God now nobody sees the kingdom of God the kingdom of God was not visible to anyone, but he was able to identify, identify the nearness of the kingdom. Why? Because he was tracking with God. Why? Because he's a prophet. Why? Because, amen, his heart, amen, is connected to the intentions of God. I, I told you this before, that John came out of, you know, a religious system. In fact, remember, Zechariah was a priest. John's father was a priest with, within that religious system of the day. But the Bible says he, he, he broke away. He left that order. He went to position himself in a desert. 
it was positioned in a desert. Why? Because it is in that place, all right, that the word of the Lord is going to meet him. And it's from that place that he will have to transit, amen, to, you know, to the city where he will need to declare, hallelujah, the counsel of God, the judgment of God, and the, and the, and the, and the now word of God, if you will, for that season in time. So what we're seeing right now, all right, is, is that God is changing the order. There are, there are this group of people that have, represent, if you will, a, a, a type of a John the Baptist who have been crying in the wilderness. People like me, and I know there are several out there, all right, that have left the religious system. I left the religious system some 20 years ago. I literally left the religious system. That's why today when you speak, you know, some people look at you when you say things, you know, uh, you know, they, people just want to stone you because they can't understand where, where, where you're coming from. You know, aren't you supposed to be one among us? I may look like one of you, talk like, in fact, I don't talk like you, but I may look like you. But the, the, the values that defines my life, where I source all right, my my. my my, my intentions and, and visions and direction is from, from a different order. I'm not of the earth. I'm, I'm in the earth and I understand and recognize my place in the earth, but I am not of this world. I am not of the religious system all right, that defines this world. No, no, I'm not from there. I'm from a different order. I live from a different order of priesthood. A priesthood designed and birth by the order of Melchizedek. You can't trace it. You can't, you, you, you can't kill it. All right. You can't tame it. I'm like a wind. You can't stop it. This thing is beyond, uh, uh, you know, a, a system that can be quenched, that can be, can, that can be stopped. This, this is beyond, you know, uh, somebody said, you know, sometimes they say all these people, you know, what, what they, what they have is, you know, is internet ministry. They're always on, you know, on, on Facebook and it's, it's Facebook is their ministry. They don't understand reality and I laughed I said you don't understand we 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 understood reality because we have built church we've done all these things that men have uh, uh, you know are clamoring are holding on to we've done all that and the Lord said come out of them <laughs> leave that order leave it so God 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 created a platform like this for us to be able to communicate to those that will be coming out to those all right who may still be in within the system all right but cannot hear so god will give us a platform that is borderless god will give the, give us amen you know a, an order of system all right that cuts across what men hallelujah can, can you know can you know can stop you know there are certain things that you cannot say excuse me all right. There are certain things that you cannot say back then in the in the religious system. And I'm sure there's still a lot of people today all right, who, who, you know, because of the, the system that they belong, they cannot make certain proclamation. They cannot ask their pastor, their prophet, their apostle. God knows what they call them. They cannot ask them certain questions. They, 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 the system, all right, do, do not allow, can, do not permit them all right to have certain relationship all right with the people they call their shepherd so what god did is he began to break down the walls he said i'm gonna break down the walls of the church all right and i'm gonna create a platform called facebook and and twitter and you know and google plus and all this you know social media because you see we've got to understand and i'm saying this because i know that uh we, we're not gonna have this kind of platform for you know forever no uh, we, why we have this platform we've got to prepare ourselves and make the best use of it. That's why when I come on end, it's because there's a word that I need to give. I'm not coming for people to see my face. In fact, I don't want you to see my face. I, I want to be able to give you the counsel of God. I want to be able to give that man, that woman that is that is hungry, that is searching, that is asking questions, that the pastor, that the apostle, that the prophet cannot give, will not, you know, will not respond to. I want to be able to tell you this is the meaning of the handwriting you've seen on the wall. So that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right. So so this is not about uh, we, we we don't have have a base uh, we've got base uh, we've got people we've got i mean i've got people from different part of the world who follow what we're doing online i mean I was, some some time ago i was checking you know uh you know my you know uh, uh my, my my wordpress you know you know account and i'm looking at the number of people from different parts of the world connecting and and downloading material and i'm saying to myself god i'm humble and, and that tells you something that when the season changes the system changes the pattern of how we do ministry and how we emphasize ministry ought to change our garment must change our modus operandi must change if we don't change in days where god is judging amen the old order we may just be found amen in the crossfire 
So John declared, he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The question is, what are we repenting from? And what are we repenting to? What are we repenting, repenting from? And what are we repenting to? That's very, very critical. That we understand that repentance is not just, Jesus, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, please come into my life. Uh, no, no. You've got to repent, amen, from the values that you've embraced, that you have, that you have sourced, all right, that is not designed and defined for where you are, for that which, amen, you've been allocated or committed, amen, to, you know, to, to, to speak and to represent you've got to understand that repentance is 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 is, is a dimension amen that deals with the very intentions the very agenda the very structure and the system that drives your values that drives your values that you cannot say that you're repenting all right uh, but but you're still within the system you're still within the structure of religion of babylon you are still drinking you're still eating amen from the table uh, uh, you know of, of jezebel no no that's not repentance you cannot be saying this, the, the words uh, but but your actions your your attitude and your values amen is 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 connecting to a different order this is the day where god is bringing amen is 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 his church amen and 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 the false order amen to the mount Carmel. you know what happened in mount Carmel. but but uh, there are several other things i really want to quickly share with us i don't really want to flog this idea for too long but i needed to understand that we are in a day of divine judgment and this judgment is 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 is, is, is being manifest because of the season that is about to be ushered in I, I said you know the last you know uh session we had that when god begins to highlight and accelerate judgments within the church within the land within the nation is because amen is about to close that season the, the, the closure of a season, amen, accelerates, amen, the judgment of God within the land. It accelerates the judgment of God. You begin to see things, all right, begins to get exposed. God start exposing people. He start exposing wrong system. He start exposing, you know, you know, people who have, who have taken advantage, amen, of the church. They are taking advantage even of government. God will start exposing corruption and, and all kinds of things, all right. Th- th- these things don't happen coincidental. No, it's because the judgment of God, amen, is at hand. And therefore, in the day of the judgment of God, we who are tracking with the things of God, tracking with God, ought to align ourselves to that day where we change our garment, we change our value system, we change what we, you know, how we, how we view things and how we judge things so that we are not we're not caught up. Okay, now le- let me read another scripture. I quickly want to read another scripture. Yeah. You know, there was a standard that, you know, that Noah set for us. Remember in, in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says that, you know, darkness and wickedness was, was the order of the day. I mean, God was, God, God was angry. And in fact, the Bible says God repented that he created man. That was how wicked, all right, the state of the earth was back then. The Bible says God, in fact, he repented that he created man. You find that in Genesis chapter 6. The Bible says this, you know, it says, my spirit will not contend with man forever for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. The Bible says in those days you find in the, 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 the Nephilims were on earth and they were increasing and growing and they went into the sons of men and all that and all that. Then in verse 5, the Bible says, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness was on earth. That in every inclination of the thought of man was continually wicked. The Bible says in verse 6, the Lord was grieved that he had made man on earth and his heart was filled with pain. Can you imagine? The heart of God was filled with pain. I, I can imagine the degree of, of, you know, of, of, of iniquity that will cause God to, you know, to, to actually begin to you know, feel pain. I mean, we're talking about God here feeling pain. This was the degree of iniquity and sins of men. But verse, verse 7 of, you know, Genesis chapter 6 says, the Bible says, So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind. I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that moves along the ground, the birds of the air. For I am grieved that I have made them. 
Now look at this. Now look at the next st statement. The Bible says, "But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord." Now the question I'm asking myself: in the midst of this grief, in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this, you know, God regretting that He created man, He found one man by the name Noah. So this man was just somewhere hidden and refused to give into. You know, the general order, the general system, the general church system of the day, the general political system of the day, the general economic standard of the day. Noah was, was you know, was a different order, different pattern of a person. In, in fact, this guy was aberrant to the concept of existence in his day. This guy, I mean, he, he's, like, he's, he's like Melchizedek. <laughs> I mean, you're in the midst of, of, of reality, yet you're not there. No, the Bible says, but Noah found favor. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord. In the midst of God saying, I'm going to wipe man from the face of the earth. I want you to track this and see how the judgment, judgment of God all right, is triggered. All right. You see, we've got to we've got to be able to sense and understand how God's judgment gets triggered in the earth. Now here's God saying, I want to condemn the world. I want to I want to wipe everything that I've created from the face of the earth. But Noah found favor. I mean, to me, that's 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 just shocking. But Noah found favor. So who is Noah? We should be able to find out who Noah is. Because when we track Noah, when we find Noah, we should then be able to see all right, a principle, a pattern. In, 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 in Noah that gives us insight to how God Allah, deals with man in the earth. The Bible says, but Noah found, but Noah found, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Then the scripture continued. Then the Bible says, now this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time time blameless among the people of his time so noah was a standard i mean what a standard there's nothing religious about noah the bible says noah was a righteous man meaning that he had a man a, a, a right standing he had he had proximity he had a position he, he was he was a man who, who who sought the face of god that is what it means to have to, to be righteous to be righteous means to be able to see the face of God. To be righteous means to be able to, you know, live life in accordance to that which is flowing out of the throne room, out of the face of the Father, out of his desire, out of his counsel. In other words, Noah had insight into how God wanted life to be lived. This is not just about Noah being, you know, being religious. No, he, he, he must have been tracking God right from the days of Adam. He must have been tracking God. He said, why did man fail? Why did God send man out of, out, of the, out of the garden? So he found it. He said, when we don't track God and find his ways and find his pattern, there's no way we'll be able to give him pleasure. There's no way we'll be able to please him. So when we study the word of God, we're not studying the word because we want to be religious. No, we're studying the word of God to find his value, to find his heart, to find his desire, to find his will, to know how he wants us to live life. The word of God reveals how God wants life to be lived. The word of God reveals to us how God wants life to be lived. So when we read the word of God, we find how a man divine pattern of you know of 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 of, of life a man ought to function. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless. Remember that you can't be blameless if there are no standard of iniquity. Okay. The Bible says he he was he was he was, he was blameless. He was blameless. He was blameless. He was blameless among the people of his time. He walked with God. Three things we have seen. He was a righteous man. He was blameless. He walked with God. He was a righteous man. He was blameless. He walked with God. So, so when you don't find these three concepts in, in your own life, in my own life, there is no way we can define a man our our relationship with God, our relationship with God, Amen, is hung on this three word: being righteous, being blameless among others, and walking with God. And so, God said, verse eleven, the Bible says, "Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was filled with violence." God saw how corrupt the earth had become. For all, for all the people of the earth are corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, this is the first time God is speaking to Noah. 
God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. The earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make for yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make room in it and cut it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. So basically now God is showing us a pattern here. Noah, you are my standard of judgment. So the word God gave to Noah became a standard of divine measurement. But not just the word, but what God asked Noah to build. So Noah became a, a pattern of how to avert the day of judgment. Because when Noah finished building that which God asked him to build, the next thing you're going to see, the next thing that is going to be manifesting in the earth will be the judgment of God. So we're tracking something very important here. God said, no, this is what I'm going to do. I want, I'm going to wipe the earth away. But you found favor in my sight. You're righteous man. You're blameless. You're working with me. This is what I want you to do in the earth. I want you to build a pattern. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to engineer something that is different. That is, that is aberrant. That, that looks strange to that which men are building. The Bible talk about two people building their house. This is something I really also want to emphasize before, you know, I begin to call it a day. You know, this, this morning, the Bible says two guys, two, two system of people, two system of life, two system, two values, two order. One built his house on a rock. The other built his, his house on a sun. These are not just the concept of building. This is the definition of that which de- drives and, 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 you know, and, and, and forms how we live our life. The Bible says one built his house on a rock. The other built his house, amen, on the sand. The Bible says, God said to Noah, build Build, build an ark. Coat it with pitch inside out. God began to give Noah a system of this, of this construction. Not even Noah understood what this, what this was going to be or pan out to be. He was just obeying God. All right. You see, the judgment of God brought the manifestation of that which God asked Noah to build. Amen into reality in other words the judgment of god which of course was was rain at that time amen suddenly brought the wisdom the wisdom of the ark into into reality into existence not not even Noah understood what he was building god just said build an ark he was building so the concept is if we're not building that which heaven has called us to build, we are setting our life up for destruction because when the judgment of God begins to come, it will impact everything that we have built with the, with the wisdom of this world, with carnality, with our, with our own suke, with our own idea, with our own, you know, our, our philosophy. Everything that we have built on the principles and the philosophies of, of the world will be tested, will be tried by fire. And I tell you, if you're house amen it's not built with the right material if your value system amen is not in alignment to that which amen heaven requires it's gonna be a lost let me quickly read one or two things here before i begin to close it up all right heaven is bringing its prophetic intention and standards and values within the context of this season to an end in a rapid state of judgment that requires every member of the body of Christ within this generation to urgently and precisely adjust their system of operation in divine alignment to come in divine alignment amen in complete obedience to the standard and order of God less will be caught up amen in the crossfire of God's divine judgment in this season one of the manifestation of the closure of a season is a rapid manifestation of the ministry of judgment at all levels. All right, it's going to be happening at all levels. Nobody will be left behind. Nobody will miss this day of judgment because this day of judgment is not just about condemnation. It's about highlighting the values of our life. It's about highlighting the standard of our life. It's about highlighting the quality of what we've been building. It's about highlighting, amen, the quality of our values. God's judgment, amen, 
will highlight those who are working with God and those who have been disobedient, who have been rejecting his standard, who have been going off the, off the standard. All right. It's, it's, listen, if you are working with God, you are tracking with God, you are doing what God will have you do. Don't ever think that your, 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 you know, your sacrifice is going to go in vain. No, 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 no. The day of judgment will make your work, hallelujah, you know, clear. The Bible says the fire of God, which is a type of God's judgment, amen, will bring your work, amen, to, to, to view. Yes. The Bible says those who build their house with straw and hair and rubbles, you know what happened to them? Compared to those who build their house, amen, with silver and gold, hallelujah. You've got to understand that if God is saying something that hey, you've got to walk in alignment, live your life in accordance to divine standard, that is not for fun. Don't look at those who are building their house and everything looks wonderful and looks good and looks mm, wow, everybody's admiring it but the very quality, the material they, that they've built with, amen, has not passed the value standard, the value test of God. Therefore, in the day of judgment, you're going to be seeing those houses crumble. It could be their relationship, it could be their marriage, it could be their children, it could be whatever it is that you're building that is not built on the value principle of God. Listen to me, a day of judgment will bring those things to light and you will be tested. And if you're tested and you are not built on the solid foundation of truth, guess what? It could be your children, like I said, it could be your business, it could be your ministry, whatever it is, it's going to crumble. The day will reveal, amen, the quality of what we have been building. Don't invest in that to which is which is temporal you've got to be able to see into the future and build i mean historians say it took you know uh, uh, no 100 years some say 120 years for him to build that ark you see the le- the longevity of time is not what what matters when it comes to the divine order and the divine standard of god the longevity of time is not time is not it's not it's not the it's not it's not the thing you if you're looking at time oh everybody's gone you know people we started ministry together you know i mean if i look at people we started ministry back then with some of them have got domes. People that were my friends that we started ministry, they've got domes. They, they, I mean, they've built big and large. They're all over the place across the wall. But when I look at their life, when I look at the values, when I look at what they're preaching, I say to God, thank you, Lord, that I didn't follow them. Thank you, Lord, that I did not, I did not you know, you know, accept the same path that they, they, they chose. No. And a lot of them today are calling themselves men of God. They're calling themselves prophet. They, you know, saying all funny things. But their life is not not hallelujah reflecting the values the standard of heaven and i know as the day of judgment begins to knock on us as heaven hallelujah begins to draw close as the kingdom of god begins to come near listen god will start highlighting those things god will start bringing those things into into manifestation and god help you if you have not built with the right quality of life everything you've built will be lost the bible says they will suffer lost there is no place we can hide in this day from God's judgment. God's, God's, God's light of judgment is, is across the earth. There's no way you can hide. Be in America, be in Europe, be in, you know, in, in, in Russia, wherever, Africa. God is highlighting. God is highlighting. You see, the judgment of God is global. All right. It, it, it may be, it may be, it may be seen. It may be emphasized. All right. More in a particular region, but it is something that is happening globally. So nobody's going to miss this day. Everybody must get their house in order. We've got to undress ourselves. We've got to wear the right garment. That's another thing I would have loved to share. The Bible says, remember the king who, who, who made a banquet and invited his friends to come eat. But everybody gave excuse why they cannot come. Finally, one found himself, you know, squeezed himself, wangled himself, amen, you know, into, into, into the banquet. And the Bible says the king found this guy. With the wrong garments. He wasn't wearing the right apparel. That was a day of judgment. He wasn't, he was, he was in the midst of the, you know, of the crowd, you know, of the guests. But he was not with the right apparel, with, with, with the right uniform. He, his values, his, what he reflected, or uh, was completely different to what, amen, was required for the standard of the day, for, you know, for the invitation. And so the king, the Bible says, the king asked his servant to bundle him up while they asked him, friends, why are you here? He said, friend, he knew him. He said, 
my God, why are you here with the wrong valley? Why are you here with the wrong system? Why are you here with the wrong apparel? Why, why, why did you build with the wrong value? He called his servant, bundle him, cast him out. That's a powerful principle that we've got to look into. So it's not about what we're doing. It's about how we're doing it. Because the judgment of God is coming. Like I said some time ago, the judgment of God is to reveal to us that God has a standard. The judgment of God is to reveal to us that God has a standard. Everything in life must, de- must, must have a standard for you to be able to define, amen, uh, 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 you know, the order of right or wrong. You cannot say something is right or wrong if there is no standard. You cannot say, "Amen." Uh, you know, you 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 miss you miss the boss if you if you, if you have never, Hallelujah, given the time to to arrive. All right. So the time of arrival is the standard. So we've got to understand that the days that we're living in, heaven is saying things to us, revealing things to us that we cannot. You know, Sean, we cannot, you know, close our blind eyes or, you know, say, no, no, I don't want to hear. You've got to hear because these are days where the Spirit of the Lord is walking, is building things that will help us, amen, adjust to that which the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing. We want to be able to understand the principle of God's judgment so that in the day where heaven begins to demand, demand the change, we're not like, I mean, like, you look at what is happening today. With you know some of these so-called you know prophets that are being judged here and there, and you wonder why so-called Christians are supporting them, you know, are defending them, and you're asking yourself, why would you be defending that which is indefensible? Why would you be defending that which is in? I mean, if somebody will lie and say, well, uh, I did raise a dead person in my church, and it's glaring and clear that sorry, you lied. What do you think God is saying through that? God is highlighting that to reveal his judgment. And we're going to be seeing more of that. It may not be somebody claiming to raise, to raise a debt. It may be something else. But we're in a day where all right, heaven is pointing at some of those things that are completely wrong and that have brought, you know, uh, uh, distribute and shame amen, to his name. God wants his church to come into a day of divine representation, maturity. But it's, that's not going to happen if God does not deal with this ungodliness, this misrepresentation. Today, when you say church, we people have got different concepts and values of measuring what is success in the church. Today, when you say, you know, a successful church, you want to talk about, does a man, he's got a limousine, does he have an aircraft, you know, does he have a mansion, how big is the size of the church? When in the world did you see that as as values, as, as standard to measuring success? But today, that's what we see. So God has to bring those things to, you know, to an end, to judgment. For us, for the world to be able to see that uh-uh, those ones, they're not really the ones, you know, they're, they're, they're not the church. They, they, they send themselves. They were not sent. And, you know, sometimes I was thinking about this this morning. I'm saying to myself, I mean, it's easy for government to point fingers and start judging, you know, some of these people. But they themselves set the standard. I'm talking about the government, particularly South African government. They set the standard of highlighting, you know, this church is as, you know, the, the true church. When you talk about a child that represent the voice of God, that represent the will of God. You know, how do you measure that? They don't measure it by the quality of the person's value system. They measure it by size. They measure it by what the you know what that church is doing. You know, they measure it by the name of the of the or, you know of the set man. We've got to we've got to we've got to redefine how we measure, how we define you know values, how we define you know success, how we define authenticity. We've got to be able to look into the word of God. And I'm saying, well, they may not be able to do that, but they must set this, uh, you know a system in place. They say, how do we identify true men of God? How do we identify the fake from the you know from you know from you know, from the, you know, from the real. How do we identify that? You've got to be able to, you know, look at those who have been working with God, who are, you are tracking with the things of the Spirit and connect with them so that they can at least help you to be able to, you know, wipe that which is ungodly out of the land. The Bible says the eyes of the king is running through and fro. All right. The eyes of the king is on the land is watching. 
not, you know, noticing the, the, the ones that are following the path from the ones that are not. You should be able to identify that so that you don't support that which is ungodly. In other words, I'm saying the system, the system that has been set in place, all right, you know, was favorable to some of these ungodly men of God. Why will all these perverted, you know, so-called prophets come to South Africa and want to build a church? Why is South Africa a place everybody wants to come to build their ungodly, perverted ministry? They took advantage of the weak, you know, uh, 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 policies and, 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 you know, and, and, and constitutions. They, they took advantage of that. That's why they can do that. They took advantage of, you know, of, 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 you know, of, of, you know, of bad leadership in government. They took advantage of that. So we have to begin to speak against these things and correct it so that the counsel of God, the will of God, the mind of God can be fulfilled in our day and in our time. We want to be able to raise a standard that aligns to the will of God, that aligns to the standard of God, that aligns to the mind of God. We want to live a life, amen, that is tracking the movement of God within, hallelujah, the, the, the values, the values and the principles that God has set for us in his word. So that when we begin to see what is happening in terms of judgment, amen, we begin to rejoice. We rejoice not because oh, we've seen our brother being condemned. We rejoice because the values that we stand for, hallelujah, is pain, is pain, is pain for us, is pain out. I mean, there are sacrifices that somebody like me, I mean, I have, I, I, I have, I have, you know, taken over my life to see that the will of God, you know, sometimes when, when, when you, when you tell people where you're coming from and then people look around, they're expecting to see God knows what. And you say, sorry, you don't, you don't see it. <laughs> and it's like, are you sure you, are you sure you're telling the, you're saying the truth, you're telling the truth. Yes, I'm telling the truth because we don't measure success by what we have built or what we have amassed we measure success by how we track how we follow how we journey with god all right the proximity of 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 our walk with god amen defines our our you know our success god said i'm going to you think when god was speaking to noah that he was going to wipe everything he created from the face of the earth you think you think there were no you know skyscrapers and you know and mansions and and god knows what I mean, there were things, infrastructures that have been built. But God wasn't looking at that. When God wants to judge a nation, judge a people, God is not looking at the infrastructure. God is looking at the heart of man. It is the heart of man that defines and determines the judgment of God, hallelujah, or the approval of God. So we've got to get our priorities right. I'm not going to build my life, amen, on, you know, on, 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 you know, on, on things that can just evaporate like that. No, no. I'm not going to build my life, my ministry, my home, you know, my family on things that you can just blow away. That today is, tomorrow, you f they're, they're no longer there. You want to build your life, I mean, hallelujah, on a values, amen, that, 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 that last, on, 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 on principles, amen, that can take you and take your children's children, amen, to the next generation. You want to build on that which, amen, when you stand and speak, people can see that this guy has been tracking with God, has been walking with God. This is a person, this is an elder. These are days where God is shifting the, the, the concept of leadership from just mere a leader to an elder. Elders are wise people who sit at the gate. A leader may do anything to get influence, to get popular. I, I don't want to be influential. No, I'm not seeking for influence. <laughs> I, I want to be able to be positioned where God wants me to be positioned so that I can, in, in fact, influence a society from a divine, from a spiritual realm. Because indeed, that's how we influence people. We don't just influence people because we have the power to, you know, to, you know, to, to, you know, to not just to manipulate, but to convince people. No, no. You, you want to be able to influence people, hallelujah, from a, from, a, from a governmental spiritual realm so that what you say becomes the distilling reign of God within that region. That's how we want to change, you know, society. And that's what we're doing. And therefore, we've got to understand that in this season where God is bringing, hallelujah, a generation, an order to an end, and God begins to open up, amen, a new day, a new season, 
Hallelujah. A new voice is coming called the voice of John. And the voice of John will begin to set the tone for the judgment of God. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that kingdom begins to manifest through the value system of a man called Christ. So when the, when the nearness of the kingdom begins to dawn on us, it tells us that we've got to look, we've got to begin to evaluate. We've got to begin to, you know, you know, reinvent ourselves, if you will. We've got to begin to reset amen, every structure that defines who we are, our values, our mentality, our perception. We've got to look into what we define to be ministry. Are we doing it in accordance to what is required for the season or we're still running it based on how we heard it 10, 20, 30 years ago? Got to constantly track with God. I said it some time ago. There was a fine line between thus said the Lord and being a murderer. There was a fine line between thus said the Lord and being a murderer. <laughs> Abraham heard the voice of God. This is what God has said. Take your son to one of the mountains. Go sacrifice him there. Between that which God said and Abraham stop. Now I know. There's a fine line. Now, you can make a mistake and say, well, I heard God. God told me. Yes, God told you. This is what I wanted to do for that season in time. But you are no longer journeying. You are not journeying to the mountain of the Lord, to the hill of God. You are no longer asking. You are not checking with God. Am I still doing what you want me to do? Because it's important we do that. It's important. You don't hear and just run. You hear earlier, do what he wants you to do, but you go back and cross-check. Father, are you still saying this is the path? Are you still saying this is what you want me to do? Or have you changed the direction? Because listen to this. God is a spirit. He has a mind of his own. He can tell you, amen, stop. Go this point. Go that way. That's what I want you to do. God who told you to build a 3,000 city church can tell you, leave the church and go to the backside of the wilderness and wait for me there. That was Philip. So don't tell me I'm doing what God wants me to do. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You, you do what God wants you to do. Yes, to the, to, the, to, the, to the extent of his next command for your life, his next order, his next voice for your life. God's word, God's voice comes to us in seasons. God's voice come to us in seasons. I mean, I've heard God several times in my life. I mean, things that I thought, yes, this, this has to be God. Now this is, you're doing it. I can remember when I shift, when I finally moved to South Africa. I mean, somebody just blessed me. Some of you have heard this testimony. I was just blessed with some good sum of money thinking, yes, this is a time to, to really do ministry in Nigeria and enjoy it. And God says, now it's time to leave. It's time to leave. It's time to go to South Africa. And I'm like, God, no. God, just allow me to, you know, to enjoy my people. And, you know, we have suffered for 18 years. We've been, we've been laboring. Finally, you've got this financial breakthrough. And God said, now it's time to leave everything. Now move. That is God. Now I can decide not to hear God and sit with, you know, my little, you know, comfort zone. I've arrived. And, and yes, start rejoicing. And God now begins to say, now I'm going to kill you. Because you have refused to obey me. And this is what God is doing. All this, all this men of God that God is judging today. All right, There was a time that they were walking with God. They heard God. They, they knew what God had said to them. And they were doing it. But guess what? They stopped hearing God because they were overtaken by their success. They were overtaken by their success. They were overtaken by their past obedience. Obedience is not something that happens once and forever. It's a continuous thing. You obey and you will continue to obey. That's why the Bible says, let those who have the ears to hear, hear what God is saying. Not what he said, what he's saying. So you will be judged if you build your life based on what God said yesterday. Based on what he told you 10 years back, 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, you need to constantly track with God, understand that with the Spirit of God requires for this day in time so that, amen, your life is in alignment with his will, with his counsel, with his home, you know, I mean, for all I care, you can be watching me and God says, I need you to begin to get yourself ready, live where you are, and I want you to move to Kenya. I want you to go start something for me. I want you to do something for me in Kenya. Or live where you are. Go to Spain. You see, God who understands his counsel and purpose for your life defines and determines your time and season, amen, on earth. 
You, you don't own, you don't own a geographical location. You do not have, hallelujah, a, a right or you, you, you don't have monopoly to a particular location. No, God can tell you, leave that place, go to the next place, live here, go to Gaza, live here, go to Judea, go to Samaria. If, you see, when the church began in Jerusalem, they thought, well, we've come to our place of arrival and they refused to listen to the prophetic voice of God to go. Because the, the word was go into the world and, you know, preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations. No, but they decide to stay in Jerusalem. You know what God did? He brought persecution. That's why God will continue to persecute the church. Particularly the Nigerian church. The Nigerian church has become a church, all right, that work with, excuse me, that once work with God, raise powerful men of God. My good God, if you talk about any church, any, any group in the earth, all right, that really run with the things of God is the Nigerian church community. But Nigerian church community got overtaken. Got caught up in his own success. Today, the Nigerian church success has become a barrier ground. No wonder God is raising all kinds of agents to bring persecution to the church because the church needs to wake up. Look at all the men of God who gave prophecy. Yeah, Obuari is not going to win. God don't found them. And they're not even ashamed. I mean, you read the scripture, you wonder, what is going on with you guys? They are not even ashamed that they gave rock prophecy. They can't even go and say, look, we're sorry. You see, God is judging a church. As he's judging a nation, he's judging the church. He will continue to shake everything that can be shaken. He says, I will humble them and I will bring their loftiness down. Because you see, God himself will raise for himself a company of people. God, God will raise for himself a company of people. All right, out of that mess, out of that ungodliness, he will raise for himself, amen, a group, a company, a remnant that will that will that will be awakened in the glory of God's eternal purpose for that nation. So that that which God wants to do with that nation can come into reality, can come into manifestation. You look at there is no place on earth today that the Nigerian church has not impacted both positively and negatively. Sometimes when I walk on the street, when you say in Nigeria, people look at you like, uh oh, don't come and deceive us again. Don't, don't give us false, pro- false prophecy. Don't sell drugs to us. But you see, it is in that shame that my own, you know, my own ability to, to hold on to God, to trust in God, becomes birth. Because I will never for one second be ashamed of where I came from. I will never for one minute, for one day, I'll uh, bury my head or deny. You know, my, 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 my identity. No, no. I'm a Nigerian. Call of God. Representing the order of God in this nation and across the world. And we've got to do that. But God will continue. You see, it's not going to happen by just, oh, we repent. No, no, no. God is going to rend the heart of the leaders. God is going to open the heart of the Nigerian church leaders. All the, all the fat cows of Bashan, all these men who, 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 who have made themselves demigods, who think that they will, they will not be judged. God will strip them. And it's from there, God will begin to awaken the cry of a people who will say, redemption, restoration. God, have mercy on us. It's going to happen. In fact, it's already happening. So I want to encourage you, if you're listening to me, that we indeed in the day of judgment. But we've got to understand the pattern of this judgment. We've got to understand. We've got to be able to track that which the Lord is doing. God will never bring his judgment to manifestation until there is a season, until there is a, 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 you know, a new system that can take over. You see, God doesn't walk in isolation. God doesn't walk where, you know, uh, uh, in vacuum. No, God doesn't walk in vacuum. There has to be somebody closing up. There has to be. You see, when God brought the generation of Noah to judgment, there was already a built ark. <laughs> there was ready, there was already a built ark. The ark was the saving grace. You see, when you and I continue to build that ark, God wants us to build. We continue to we continue to focus on the construction of the ark. Don't look at what those guys are building. Don't look at their lifestyle. Don't look at how they're here and there and they're do, doing all this on God. Don't look at that. Looking at that will be a distraction. Which will obviously lead to a destruction. Don't look at that. You keep building the ark. You keep building the ark with the eight. Come on. You say, well, we're just few people. Just, just keep doing that. Because you are a standard to your generation. Every time God found himself a standard in the generation, he brings that generation to judgment. 
And I can tell you that the, one of the reasons why God is bringing this nation, South Africa, Nigeria, and some other, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to judgment as God continues to highlight this perversion and is because a new order of church is about to emerge. God is finding himself, amen, a mature order of believers, amen, who will truly represent his counsel and his purpose, amen, without self getting in the way. This is what God is doing. So it's important we understand this and align our heart to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That the Bible says that, and you, child, will become the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord preparing his way to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercies of God, whereby the sunrise shall visit, whereby, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who are in darkness. And in the shadow of that, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. I got a word of, a word of God for you. You, you. you may think, you know, nothing is happening, but you're, you're growing something. You're growing something that is still in that child, childhood form, but it's growing, it's developing. Come on. There is, there is something that is being birthed in your heart. True, amen. The authenticity of God's divine approval. Amen. This child, amen, has not been, has not been, has not been, has not been corrupt. Amen. The, 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 the child's hair has not been touched with scissors. This is a Nazarene. You, you're building this order. You're building this capacity. And, and something is taking place. The child is growing and becoming strong in spirit. The Bible says, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Don't seek a public ministry when your spirit man has not been mature. Don't, don't seek a public ministry when you are still in that realm of infancy of that to which God wants to do prophetically for your generation. Don't run ahead of your time. Don't run ahead of your time. Wait. Bible says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, when you wait upon the Lord, there's a renewal of your strength. Your strength represents that to which, amen, you, 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 you carry before God. That your strength represents your, your position of, of sonship. Your, your strength represents your Benjamin. <laughs> represent that to which, amen, your seed means and represent to your generation. That is your strength. What you're about to bring forth is your strength. But before your strength comes into being, you have to go through a season of barrenness. Before John Aliyah was born, I told you this before, that there was a season of barrenness. Yes, in that period of barrenness, check the prof check the word of God. All those who usher in the move of God for their generation, who usher in the seed of God's counsel, God's prophetic counsel for their generation, all went through a season of barrenness. Barrenness is a part of ministry that God uses to birth and to bring forth is prophetic agenda to a generation so when God begins to shut down and God begins to not to seem as if he's responding to the cry of his people listen to this I mean there are times that I've cried God God just move God God where are you is like God is like you don't hear the voice of God and I, I, I can understand because God is bringing a generation to an end. God is judging a generation. You see, when, 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 when John was going through the process of waiting and being prepared, you know, there was an institution, a religious institution in the land. Everybody was looking to that institution. When you talk about church, they will point to those church. Amen. When you talk about the real men of God in town, they will point to those guys. But guess what? The real man of God was at the backside of the wilderness. God was preparing him. This guy was still feeding on wild honey and locusts. Amen. He was still wearing amen, a camel's, you know, a, a clothing. And, 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 you know, God was still cooking and preparing his own voice. Bible said when the word of the Lord came to him in the wilderness, it went straight to, to you know to you know to Jerusalem. He challenged the system of the day. He challenged the order of the day. So we've got to understand that when God is ready to bring a season to an end, then he's ready to manifest his vessel, his servant that will carry amen. You know his his his, his voice to the next order. All right, I'm just going to quickly round up here now. Then I'm going to come back later in the day and conclude this teaching. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you have really 
found something or learned something from the things that I've said is one hour. I've been preaching for one hour, uh, f- 15 minutes thereabout. Okay, so we'll come back hopefully um, in the afternoon by maybe three o'clock. We'll do another part and then we'll co- conclude this. All right, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the fact that you're able to join us to be part of this uh, um, teaching. Please share the uh, share the um, you know the stream or right, share the link watch it again listen to it again obviously you can also download the message on our you know Potter's Gate broadcast you know um website okay you can search for the Potter's Gate online broadcast you can find our teachings there you can also download thank you so very much i really appreciate you please continue to pray for me may we continue to journey with the lord together god bless you bye bye